tipsy cause I've been sipping on Henny I got the study of my vision and she ain't from the city If she ain't foreign then she boring Love the way you twerking shawty Throwing money on her own I call her independent shawty What's up everybody? I'm Eva Rabbit We are here on Forza Motorsports 7 Staring at that wide bodied MX-5 Forza Edition today. We are going to be building a possible new ESDA car for 2019 with the 2019 year coming up very, very soon with New Year's right around the corner. It is time to get into the grind to be building a new ESDA car or possibly running the same car as I was running last year with a new modified tune. But I've been very curious on doing a build on this MX-5. I know I've done one before. But now it is the new settings, new setup, drift suspension. So we're going to get into it and see what we're going to do with this car. I believe we are going to leave the stock motor in, I believe. I'm not sure if we're going to do the V8 or the quad rotor. We're going to leave the stock motor in for right now. See what kind of power we can get out of the stock motor. But I believe we are going to supercharge it because I like superchargers. So we're going to throw a supercharger on it and then uh, we're going to go get into the normal nitty gritty so far. We're going to throw that drift suspension on. Of course, we got to run drift suspension because it is allowed in uh, ESDA this year. So we're going to get that installed. We're going to get a roll cage installed because that's also required by ESDA rules. And then we got to determine what weight we're going to be at because that's the biggest kicker for tire width. So let's check what our main, what our factory tire width is right now in the rear. It is a 255. So 255 is 2,000 and 2,300 pounds or heavier. Up to 2,700 is 215s and below. So I need to see if weight, because right now we're at 21. So it's a very light car. So I'm wondering if 255s, so max tire size is 255s for 20, basically up to 2,300 pounds, I believe. So we are good running it at 2,100 pounds. I'm going to make sure I double check rules to make sure that I am correct. And uh, we're going to have to get all of this information on here for all of our uh, drivetrain components because we do want all of this stuff installed, which all of it is legal. So we are going to go and uh, make sure we are on sport tires. We are not. We're on stocks. So we are on stock streets. So we can do sport tires on the car. Well, we have to run sport tires on the car. So we are going to switch to sport tire compounds, which I'm surprised are not the street tires. So we are going to be running sports. And uh, we're going to be leaving 245s in the front and 255s in the rear because we can only go up to 275, but the car has to be 2,800 pounds or heavier to go up to a 275 that is a big tire that's a big car i believe my other my ac camaro was running almost uh 315s so we got to figure out what uh what wheels we're gonna want to rock i'm still feeling these but i think we're going to do maybe some hres i haven't fully decided what ooh those are kind of nice. We're going to go with those for right now. I believe we are going to be running... I believe these are 19s or they're 18s and the car is just really small. They are 18s. We're going to run 18s. So now we're going to go into power, which we're going to see how much power we can make out of this car. I want to make sure that I have a decent amount of power, but not too much power. I believe my car last year had way too much power. And then we will get into the tuning and the nitty gritty of it. I feel like I've already installed all these parts before. And that's why it's not costing me really any money to upgrade this car. Until we get to the supercharger. That is where money will come into play. So it's 563. 
I'm wondering if this is going to be, I mean, the car is very light, so this may be overkill in power. 564 at 2100 pounds, that might be overkill on power, but we are going to, we can't add brakes to this, can we? Hopefully we have fully adjustable brakes because there's no uh, brake upgrade. Hopefully we have adjustable brakes because that would make this very interesting if we did not have the ability to adjust our brakes. So let's go into tuning. Make sure we can adjust our brakes. We can't. Okay, we're good. I was making sure we could adjust our brake pressure because I didn't have the option. So we are going to run our brakes down to 50. And we're going to kick our diff up to 175 to start. And then, of course, we're going to throw this car in and do some... Uh, fine-tune testing on the car and make sure we leave all that there soften it up a little bit we're gonna make some very fine adjustments to this car once we hit the track we're gonna lower it within as far as we can to start off and we're gonna soften sway bars I feel like we're just gonna kick in some camber and some toe and throw in some caster angle keep 60 degrees we're gonna leave our gearing set how it is we're gonna drop our tire pressures and then we will hit the track and see how how she handles like this and uh, see if this is a decent car to run or not so we're going to uh, hit the track I'm not sure which track we're gonna run but we will probably find find our way to Long Beach after we see if this car is a decent gripping or drifting car. I say gripping. Oh, we're already at Long Beach, so I guess we might as well just chuck it at Long Beach and uh, go for go for the gusto right away. We are on the Logitech GNI20 with our Energy Innovations wheel, hydraulic handbrake, and sequential shifter. We're just gonna go straight for the gusto on Long Beach and see. If we can just do a basic Long Beach run in this car and see how it handles to start. So I'm very curious about switching cars this year for ESDA um, and uh, looking to try and uh, qualify for some rounds. Definitely bringing all the ESDA content to you guys when I am. Um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get into some rounds and get into tandem, into tandem battles. So we're just going to hop right to it. Kick it around, heat up our tires a little bit. Gearing feels pretty good. We're probably going to be a third gear. Third gear car here. First impressions on it. Feels Somewhat stable, kind of like my Camaro does. I feel like the power is there. And the grip levels, eh, we got some tweaking to do. But for a basic run, it seems to be a pretty decent uh, pretty decent build on this. It would be very cool to run this MX-5 in ESDA. May try and get some help tuning from some, uh, some friends. And... Uh, Get this car tuning right and see if we can't make it a good handling car. So we're gonna chuck it in. Stay off the wall a little bit that one just to get used to it. I do need to be a lot deeper there, but I feel like we need to adjust our gear ratio because I don't think fourth gear would work too well. So we're probably gonna wanna adjust that gear ratio real quick. For a little more speed, grab a controller. I'm gonna go with a little more speed because I do like drifting in third gear. I probably could do fourth, but I could sit there and fine tune each individual gear and make it even better. But so far the car does handle pretty well. Um, it does rotate very fairly quickly. But I think that has to do with a very short wheelbase. The supercharger definitely adds a nice power curve to it and it's not a like on off power like a turbo it's a nice smooth gradual increase um so personally i just like superchargers i love turbos but for the power on command and no turbo lag supercharger is definitely the way to go 
We'll try to run this again. We'll probably be taking this car to a drift hopper, probably. It's a little bit better of an entry. That's not going to be good. That is definitely not going to be good. What I realize is I should probably have... All right, so I totally forgot to turn my dashboard on. So, ugh, I think there's some uh, fine tuning that needs to be made to the uh, suspension tune a little bit. And I think it has to do with some anti roll bars. Don't like the stiffness of it, so we're gonna drop it down some. We're just trying to get it to handle somewhat decent right now. And then of course, if I decide I want to keep working this car. I will continue to fine tune the settings more and more as I progress with the car, but I just need to find my chassis that I'd like to use. Advantages are allowing one car swap this year, so if I decide to use a different car, I can do swap back to my uh, Camaro that I know I'm pretty comfortable in if I feel this car is not working in my favor. There we go, that's a little bit better. That was not what I wanted to do, but at least we were able to somewhat get a full pull. The gearing does feel a little bit better, so I feel the fine tuning of this suspension will have to come with time, but I do kind of like the chassis, so I think I'm going to be probably using the MX-5 chassis and maybe the Camaro chassis, unless I decide something different. Of course, if I decide something different, I'll let you guys know. So I know a lot of people liked watching the ESD Endeavor last year, with the little bit that I did do. So hopefully uh, I can do better and have more content with the USDA this year and actually uh, get into the qualifying and actually get into some battles. I know uh, practice is a lot of fun as well as qualifying is nerve wracking, but this year I'll probably be a little bit more, a little more poised and a little less uh, nervous. So with the 2019 USDA season coming up very soon, um, I'm looking to, uh, hone my uh, drifting skills, hone my car tunes, and get a well-dialed car so that uh, we can do decent in ESDA this year. I don't really want to waste race in the rain, so we're going to try to find one more drift hopper if we can that isn't in the rain, and then maybe see if we can't shred some doors in this Miata. So, like I said, if you guys are competing in ESDA, let me know in the comment section down below. What cars, what chassis are you guys running? What chassis do you like? Ooh, Rio. I can get down with some Rio. So, I'm between my Camaro, the MX-5, or another one or two cars, which I'm not sure if I'm going to run. So, we're going to run Rio Mountain Circuit Reversed, which is going to be weird because it's going to be uphill. I think. I don't think I've run this before. So we can see if we can't get some doors here in this MX-5 the new potential ESDA car for 2019 season. Like I said, 2019 season's right around the corner because 2019 is a few weeks away. It is Christmas next week. I cannot believe this year is already gone. So we are going to try and see if we can't get some doors with this MX-5 and uh, try and have a little fun here on the Rio Mountain circuit in this car see if we can't get a little bit comfortable with it it is different with the short wheelbase so it's a matter of getting comfortable with this car to decide if i want to use it or not so a better way to throw it in than a rio mountain right now i think the gear ratio is pretty good i love the steering angle of this car a lot of left foot braking don't hit him. I've actually never run this course in reverse. Ooh, there we go. Oh, I already lost the wing. Well, this wing comes off a lot easier than the uh, Camaro the wing does. This is weird coming off this hill. I don't know if I'm a fan too much. I didn't realize he was slowing down that much. 
Oh my. That lag. That lag got me. The lag caused me to lose it. So we're going to see if we can't regain it. Now we lost the tail light. We're not going to have a car left to run ESDA in if I keep this up. I'd like to run that a little bit wider, but... I mean, the car does handle fairly well. And I feel like I could get used to it and get down with it. With a little fine-tuning of the suspension, of course. Because I don't, don't feel the suspension is there yet. But I think I should have been going sideways. Oh, trying to stay really hard on the brakes. We may switch up to the Camaro and see how the Camaro runs here to give us like a baseline because you all know I'm super comfortable in that Camaro. And I know probably some people are saying, well, if I'm super comfortable in the Camaro, why would I switch chassis? Well, it's a new year, a new chassis, new car. Got to try and uh, change up the game a little bit. And who wants to see the same car running again? All right, I think we're going to switch up to the Camaro and see if uh, the Camaro handles just as good here on Rio because Miata's uh, pretty twitchy. So, like I said, if you guys run ESDA or are planning on running ESDA, let me know down in the comment section down below. What chassis are you guys thinking? What chassis do you guys think I should drive? You guys have been following the channel for a while, so you know my driving style. What chassis do you think I should drive in the SDA? And uh, so let me know what you guys think. So now we're going to rip this car because this car, I know a little bit left and right and sideways. Just tap. I did change the power on this car a little bit. I did lower the power curve a little bit and take some power out. So. Oh, too much left foot brake. I thought he was gonna go faster. So this track is just goofy. My wheel feels a little bit weird on this track. Oh, we lost our mirror. But at least that's the only thing we lost. Just tap. Lost taillight now. So, I think that's going to do it here for this episode here. A little look at the possible car of ESDAA 2019. Like I said, let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know down in the comment section down below. And as always, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter. All of which are found in the description box below. And as always, I like, thank you guys for coming back. Like, thank you guys for watching. I'm a rabbit. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm out. We got it though.